So if you've been wondering why all of those card prices on stupid shit has gone up, like Saravis, fucking Super Rescue Cats, Black Luster Soldier going up even more, well, it's because of this. So this is the United Kingdom. Their nationals was... Whew, this is what won, by the way. Let that sink in for a moment. Okay, I, I think you had enough time to let it sink in. This and Pendulum Magicians faced off in a 700-man tournament where Sky Striker Trickstar is, of course, the best deck. And then you've got this beauty coming out of the woodwork and going, hmm, yeah, that's a, that's a really nice metagame you got there. There is so much going on in just such a small square footage here uh, that it's actually just nuts. And one of the cool things that the way that this format and general formats are going right now is we're not just one engine. Oh no, we're throwing as many engines into decks as we can. Sky Striker Trick Stars, you know, two engines. Uh, Pendulum Magicians, you've got the Jackal Knight engine, Dark Worm, and all the Pendulum Magicians themselves. You know, it, it, it's not a good example, but th there are a lot of mishmashes of just little tech things going together. And it's really cool to see how the TCG has evolved with these concepts, because to be honest with you, I still think that this is bonkers to me, uh, but, you know, congratulations, Light of Seca. You've finally done something. So one, one of the cool things about Light of Seca, uh, a lot of people were expecting Muramails to be the way to go with this. Uh, Burning Abyss, uh, Seca's Light, a lot of people knew about this deck when it first came. I think a lot of people discounted it. They're like, oh, well, you need Shroob, need to play the deck. Which, I mean, I don't disagree with you. But having a card that if you have no spell and trap cards in your graveyard, you get to draw two. And then for the rest of this duel, you can only activate, you know, this card. And then, of course, I mean, you can also banish the Light of Seccas so that you can activate more Light of Seccas. Like, what, what more do you really need? And for this to be a generic draw card, you literally just do what you do best. You play shit like Infernoids with this, you know, things that don't really punish you for not needing things, you know, Mermails for more combo ability. You know, those going second type decks that you really need. And it's one of the things I think Thomas took advantage of here was, oh, hey, I have a very good draw card in my deck. All right, cool. So if my opponent, you know, is going to punish me and try to stop me from using this with their Ash Blossom, okay, but you better be willing to stop the other things that this deck can actually produce. So it is time to look at Thomas's list. Whew, this thing is a beast. Triple Ash Blossom, you're packing a lot of hand traps in this deck, um, which is honestly what this deck does. I, I, I feel like at times this deck just says, I want to go second. It does have a go first engine built in, hello. It's me. <laughs> hello from the other side, like... It does have cool plays, and I, this deck does give you the best of both worlds. You know, I, I, I really like that about this, but Ash Blossom is your first standalone hand trap. is very good. Uh, one copy of Barbar. If you get into end-to-match procedures, you need to, you know, ping your opponent for some excess amount of damage. Barbar grants you that ability. Um, it's... One copy's fine. I don't see any reason to want to play more of that. This is also the first deck since Black Lost Soldier has gone to three, that has taken full advantage of him. Um, producing X amount of results for Black Lost Soldier, three copies is a lot, but you need to be able to see him. Also being able to double attack over something, being able to spot removal a rather large monster. You know, for a mishmash of things going forward though, Blacklist Soldier. If you see him as the chaos monster he is, um, he will bring you victory. And I, I really like that about this. Is you know, even at the end of the day, it looks like a hodgepodge of things. Fucking Blacklist Soldier's still a goddamn boss of a monster. And it was really cool getting Thomas to, you know, use this and actually kill his opponents. Three thousand double attacking is pretty good for some reason now. I'm actually kinda shocked about that. It shouldn't be good, but it is. One cow cab. I guess back row spot removal bounce is pretty good. I mean, you, you kind of have to pick your engine and how you want to play it in this deck, um, honestly. But Cow Cow, he's good as a one-up. Same thing with, unfortunately, Seer is still limited here. But special summoning is always a treat. 
Uh, Triple Draw and Lockbird, um, there have been a lot of differing opinions on this card in the current format. I think the biggest complaint I have heard about this card is it just kind of sets you back when you play it. It doesn't really give you advantage, it just stall forces the turn to end. So unless you can create some sort of board on the next turn, you're not going to get really good value out of this. Um, but it, still nonetheless, Thomas took full advantage of this. Um, with his hand trap combination, which is really cool. Triple Effect Veiler, you, you goddamn can't play any permanents in this deck, so the next best thing is Effect Veiler. Uh, I mean, me and Bar were talking about this this morning. Bar literally hit me with the, I, mean, I don't know why this guy didn't play in permanents. I'm like, Bar, read fucking Sekka's Light. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, I forgot about that part. So, yeah, more hand traps. So good. Alifun, level 2, Beast Tuner. All you need to know. La 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 la. God, this card's so good. Like, I, I feel like just hitting the win con button down here is just all you need. Fairy Tale Snow. Actually, this is this was a really interesting tech. Being able to do it with Beatrice, you know, besides having access to Farfa Blinks, being able to just beam out Fairy Tale Snow as an additional combo starter after you do this seems pretty good to me. Triple Farfa. <sighs> let the let the jokes begin. And that's where the jokes end. Thanks, guys. Uh, triple Finish Rhino. Don't really need to say anything else about this. Just a standard abuse. Thanks, Korea, for making this card for us. Triple Gals, a Star Beast. So, I was talking about the original... What was it? 60... Oh, no, no. The original 40-card monster decks. I played, like, Pot of Avarice, Monster Reborn. is like their only two spells. Um, and they would use Kwaki Maru Doom with this. And it would cause an infinite loop, basically, to kill your opponent. Now, you don't see Kwaki Maru Doom here, but you do have a level 3 Earth Beast Monster that you can special summon two of these and make this guy, or, you know, oh, or this guy. <laughs> Multipurposing is as great as it ever could be. But, Gallus, you reveal it in your hand. You send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, and then if it was a monster, inflict damage to your opponent equal to 200 times its level, and you get special summon this card from your hand. Otherwise, I mean, he goes boom, but we don't really care about that. Level 3, beast monster that deals burn damage, mills another monster into the graveyard, and on top of other things, gives you more access to more of this shit. God, it took him this long to figure this shit out. Uh, one copy of Graf, because Graf is broken. One copy of Libic because Libic <laughs> Triple Rescue Cat God <laughs> The normal summons. That's that's all I gotta say. Triple Scar being able to search for tour guides pretty good. And then two copies of Saravus, the Ascended or the Ancient and Ascendants. For those of you that don't know. You can ritual summon this card with Sprite's Blessing. We don't give a shit about that. During either player's turn when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets a monster you control. You can discard this card and negate that activation. Seems good to me, right? And then, uh, yeah, we don't we don't care about anything else that this card does. <laughs> it's just it's a hand trap that prevents targeting effects. No widow anchor. No widow anchor. No no widow anchor. No impermanence. No impermanence. Please, no impermanence me. Thank you. That's how I feel about this guy. And then of course, triple Sekka's light, the cornerstone to this masterpiece um, of a main deck. I I fucking love this actually. This does so much for this deck, and like I said, it's really cool getting the chance to finally see this shit taking off. Blacklist Soldier to one next ban list, confirmed, thanks guys. One Underclock Taker, one Unicorn, one Phoenix, one Mermaid, one Cerberus, one Decode, one Borlo. I don't really have to say anything about the Link Monsters. You guys already know that the Nightmare Engine is one of the best things in the game, and Borlo is still Borlo. Uh, your Link 3s, or your Xyz, you've kind of got a... You have a description, er, a description, Jesus. You have a rather large pool to pick from. You have Breaksword and things that didn't make it into the cut, but Grand Pulse being able to destroy a back row is pretty crucial. Nightmare Shark for the direct attack. Only two Dantes. I know a lot of people are like, why didn't he have three? Well, you're you're in a very tight extra deck as it is, and to be honest, Dante's not as great as he once was. Uh, and then one Stone King Darius. Uh, detach one material, then target one dark contract. We don't care about that. This card battles opponent's monster during damage calculation. Detach one material from this card. Make this card unable to be destroyed by battle. Destroy the opponent's monster it battled after damage calculation. Penguin for 500. This is pretty good. It takes care of those issues that you have, actually. 
One Beatrice, this card is fucking phenomenal. Literally anything in your deck is a toolbox. Naturia Beast, because we were always winning. And the Pilgrim, of course, because of this. Side deck, a little bit more spicy. Two Ghost Ogres for additional hand trap disruption. One should all dragon. Um, once again, being able to send it to the graveyard by a card effect and destroy a back row, pretty important. Uh, there's the testicles again, once again, showing that doing this on three totally awesome is good. Vanity Sphine, because you got to hit that win button some games. Like, it's so good. This and any Burning Abyss monster. It's just pretty much a blowout. Saravis for more protection. God, this with this is so dumb. Uh, two anti spell fragrance. <laughs> One per order because it's a shutdown win button automatically against the meta. And triple magic deflector. Eh. I, this could have been something better, I almost feel like. But if it worked out for him, can't really shit on him too hard for it, right? Like, just interesting card choice in the meta. But everything that you need located in one little convenient toolbox. You know, I, I really got to say, I'm massively impressed with this. And it's it's so cool getting a chance to see Gallus come back. What do you guys think about this deck? Please leave a comment down below in the description or in the comment section. I do read them. Kind of curious to know what you guys have to say about this list, and I'm out, guys. Peace. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Card Fight Vanguard channel, and join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.